Well, it looks like we're going back to school. Say hi to my only classmate. Hi. Joining us is Tim with Exploring the Abandoned. Some of you might remember him as the drunk gamer. Schools with basements creep me out, man. I don't know what it is. Bad things happen in there. For the first time in a long time, accompanied by Tim from Exploring the Abandoned, I find myself exploring a derelict dig. In this instance, we find an old school on the low country of North Carolina. For those of you who want to know where exactly, well, we don't exactly do that in urban exploring. Nonetheless, Come join us for a look into this old institution. I'll remain quiet as best as I can and let you take in the natural ambience, though some points I might call for my insight post-shoot. For many, an old school can invoke feelings of nostalgia, memories of friends made and lost, and good times with the teachers. Unfortunately, schools often bring up bad memories in my case, ones I would much rather drink to forget. I never did well with educational institutions, and oftentimes, any passions I had growing up were stunted or just thrown aside completely due to school makes me wonder just how much ended up shaping me into the way I am today. Like I heard a bang, I think, over in the other classroom. I don't know if that was just a room settling or something. Something back there. Like it sounded like it was just a big, small thud. Is anybody here with us? I doubt the building is haunted, but sometimes I hear things that can make me think otherwise. Thuds, bangs, dragging through debris. Much of that can be rationalized to the building settling, general decay leading to more crumbling, and sometimes wild animals, or even people. In an abandoned building, I can often end up afraid of my own shadow. So much can go wrong in places like this which is why I strongly discourage this kind of activity, besides it being an ugly, legal, gray area. Asbestos in that paint. I know they look like chips, don't eat them.
and Vern heard out the voice of a little kid. Hearing that noise down the hall was definitely unsettling. Again, I am trying my best to write off all of this as an animal in the building, or the building itself settling. To cast even more doubt, later on, I discovered that it was possible that birds, or possibly even bats, were using the roof of the school to nest in. It's difficult to tell for certain, as it was the dead of February. Gimbal acting up on you? Uh-huh. bad. I'm so comfortable with this. Does that happen usually? No. I think it's just deciding to call it quits or you think it's paranormal? Last time I did that, it was paranormal. <sighs> I think there might be something to this school. I'm trying to write off the heavy feeling I got as us being in an abandoned building, but it is a weird feeling. Hey, look, it's Superman. Or someone that looks... No, that ain't Super. Who is that? It looked like Superman for a moment when I looked up. <laughs> I'm presuming that was a school mascot we saw earlier, although it did look uncannily like Superman. Okay. It's not a bad piece either. Remember when schools used to have art classes? As for Tim's problem with his gimbal, I'm not quite sure what that was about, but I don't think it was anything paranormal. Likely some kind of internal issue that cropped up. Someone got seven years of bad luck. It's always interesting to walk through these structures and not just get a familiar look at the main rooms, but also get a peek in some of the side rooms, like the bathrooms or these little office nooks near each classroom. And seeing it in a state of decay, like this, can also be rather unsettling at times. I think I found what's making the noise. I think I figured out what's making the noise in the stage. What? There are holes up in the roof and I can see birds moving around. You can hear them. Shit in here. Yeah, be careful where you walk. Like something to try to come in here. 
Also watch the holes in the floor. The big stage was the main highlight of this explore. Even the area where you would sit down is crumbling, with holes in the floor and animal droppings scattered about. But then you see the stage, and it's intact save for some debris. Even the curtains still look relatively clean. It's like you could still perform on the stage if you were to clean it up a little. Although the only performances you'll be seeing on this stage would be me and Tim making fools of ourselves, reciting basic Shakespeare plays. And we turned the cameras off for that, so you'll have to take our word for it. Bear in mind, this is the first time Hello? in years I am doing any sort of urban exploration. And even with someone with me, you can probably tell, uh, I'm a bit afraid of my own Maybe. shadow. side rooms. I should have got one of my masks. This is one of those places where you might actually need it. In places like these, you don't know what could be in that paint or what those particles might be as they flutter in the air. You could be dealing with lead paint, mold, or worse, asbestos. You're getting first-hand examples of why I always discourage participation in this hobby. To put it simply, this is not safe. You saw the red sign of doom outside, right? You know, when my family bought my house over in, uh, near Winston's Mm -hmm. There was wood trim a lot like this in the house. Like it was a relic of the 80s. Dude, we know what's bad. The house I live in now, that I bought, has the exact same shit paneling. <laughs> Fucking hate it. We had to paint over it just to make it look decent. Oh, we did the same thing too. So like when I was four years old, they painted everything in that house. Oh, my wife is like painting everything. I was like, yeah, I'm just school offices back here. Well, that is where they put you in timeout. <laughs> Man, I was hoping for the total package in here. I was expecting like chains on the ceiling they tie the students to if they're bad. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of morbid sense of humor. <laughs> In reality, that was likely just another storage closet. Actually, I'll go up the other way, too. Heck. If you feel it start to squish, stop and back up. Whew. All right, 
they both connect. I'm not gonna go the other way. <laughs> I'm going back down. I don't feel safe up here. You can call us cowards for not walking around up there. But let me tell you this. Would you trust the second floor of a building that is structurally compromised? Right, flashbacks to the fire watch tower I went up like years ago. Alright, up in West Virginia there was one that was kinda... I don't think you were supposed to go there, but they had like the trail wide open to get there. So me and my family and their friends, they all went up to like the top of the tower as high as they could go. I made it about the second flight before I started getting that wobbly feeling because it's not a very sound structure. <laughs> Ooh. Feeling better now. either. Man, these ugly ass drop ceilings and up top, a kind of cool wood slat ceiling. That's why they tried to modernize it and failed. Yeah. Ooh, that's a big buckle on the floor. Yeah, so you go around it. I will try. Be careful with your breathing. There is a bit of a mold stuff on these. Well, good thing it's cold, so we don't, we're not going to disturb it. There we are. That's why I tell you when the best time to ever go exploring is when it's cold. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if that tile was going to fall right in front of me. That is hanging there by nothing. Sometimes you'll just come across doors that cannot be opened. These doors would not move so we couldn't go inside there. It kind of looked like a shared classroom beyond those doors nope, too. Door ain't moving. I could probably force it but knew who knows how much noise that would make. So that door ain't moving. You ain't moving either. I was not very organized for this trip, so I was kind of a little all over the place. To give you an idea of how disorganized I actually was, I wound up forgetting the screw to secure my camera to the stabilizing rig. I was so nervous and excited to get back into this that I just couldn't get all my gear in order. At least one of these doors opens. This one swings. More of that awful wood paneling. Shit, if I had to squat, this is where I'd do it. Yeah. And it's warmer. It actually feels kind of nice. While some rooms you can clearly see what their original purpose was for, and others you can make an educated guess on what they were used for. There are some rooms where you just can't figure it out. There was a bad this is one of those rooms where I didn't really know what its original purpose was for. Teacher lounge, more offices, storage, smaller classrooms. We don't really know. This is one of those things where only the people who worked here would know for sure. This small basement area, however, does appear to serve some kind of utility purpose with that hunk of metal left behind. Additionally, you can make the assumption that the furnace was kept down here in order to keep the school heated.
from that way. And Old buildings like these aren't long for this world anymore, with progress demanding the demolition of these buildings for new developments. This school will likely be a matter of time before it's demolished for someone's fancy house or more mass-produced residential developments. On behalf of Tim from Exploring the Abandoned, I'd like to thank you for joining us on this look into an abandoned old school. Until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the school. Farewell.